Hey everyone. So one of the most common requests for tutorials and tips that I've gotten since sharing behind the scenes post-processing videos uh, over the past year or so have been about um, how to control reflections in glass and specifically when shooting single point perspectives facing like conference rooms and things like that, um, which comes up a lot when shooting workplace interiors. So this is something that I've had to tackle a lot and I've developed a few different um, techniques for which are pretty common in the industry, I think. And those include flagging off reflections behind you using black fabric or plastic. Of course, controlling the, the light that's in the space that you're standing in that is reflecting into the glass, so turning off lights, close, shuttering windows or flagging off windows, um, and then also using flash. Using flash is something that I lean on a lot because we often, especially in commercial spaces, aren't able to control all of the, the electronic lights uh, because there's often like an egress circuit, so one out of every four lights will be on uh, for life safety reasons. Sometimes we can cover those with cinefoil or flag those off, but often the space is so large that it's just not possible to sheet you know, in front of all those reflective surfaces. Um, so I'll use flash and reduce the shutter speed so we're sort of killing a lot of that ambient light and we're, we're, the, the flash is so powerful that it's overpowering uh, any of those reflective materials that are happening um, in the scene behind us. So I'm gonna just walk through a few files of images that I've taken uh, over the last couple of years that, that have dealt with this and talk quickly through the processes that we employed to, to battle those reflections. Okay, so for this first shot, we have this really high-end office space with this beautiful conference room with corner glass, and it's this double glaze system that has some acoustic qualities to help keep the sound out of a conference room space like this. The challenge that that creates for us photographers is it's creating two surfaces that are that are reflecting elements that just adds another layer of complexity when um, trying to reduce those reflections. So we'll start with the ambient shot with the available light. Um, and you can see it's not terrible because the, the light level within the conference room is brighter than that outside of it, which is sort of the whole basis of, of reflections to begin with, is that the brighter elements are what's gonna show through, whether it be in reflections or through transparency. Um, but you, as you start to look a little closer, you see there's a lot of material and objects being uh, reflected in like these curtains, and then for sure in all these dark material, dark surfaces, anything that's brighter behind us in front of the glass um, shows through and, and really distracts from the materials and finishes on those surfaces. So we wanna try to remove some of that as best as possible. And then of course these lights that are in the room that I'm standing in that we didn't have control of for one reason or another that day are distracting and we'll either get rid of those through retouching or a combination of retouching and um, some of these strategies that we'll discuss. And then of course the lighting from the inside, you see it's sort of giving us a double a double layer here because of the the double glazing and then also it's really showing these the streakiness of these windows although they felt really clean in person they can just be sort of emphasized by certain types of lighting so what we did in this shot is we went through and went through a round of flash frames to clean up things and usually we'll divide a space like this into two because it's relatively small and it, it's a way to just knock it out kind of quickly so with this shot for the left side of the frame, you can see the curtains are cleaned up. They're shaped really nicely. We get a nice shape in the furniture here. The door reflections are even mostly gone, even though we'll, we'll do some more work for that later. And then we just kind of proceed through to get like a pretty decent general exposure of the uh, conference room in general without those reflections. And then we add our models in with the same type of lighting. If, if we uh, turn off and on the mask, you'll see that I'm standing here um, for that one and, and then we're both here for this, for these two left seated people. So here we are um, after the flashes for that inside space. And then we just run through a, a round of cleanup for the, for the sort of surrounding spaces. And then go through that round of retouching, remove some of this distracting light and flare here. Um, and then ceiling elements and some of these lights. Um, really quickly we get to this final image, uh, which I think is really beautiful. I really, really love this shot and this space. Um, and I think we were able to show how the, there's this sort of jewel of a conference room really cleanly without distractions. So we have the before version and the after. So next we're gonna go to a shot that was a, a really challenging one for me um, to sort of wrap my head around. It was, it's sort of the biggest example of this that I've ever done and um, was on the earlier side of me really like coming up with an understanding of how to control these types of situations. So if we go down here to the to the base layer, um, which is just shooting with the available light again, you'll see 
how much of a struggle we had and how, how many elements that we really had to think about and deal with. Um, we're standing in a huge lobby space that is um, pretty much all white. The ceiling is white. There's a stair back here that's stainless steel, glass, wood, and, and um, I think white painted steel. And then the floor, of course, is, is all marble. So just, and then a, a huge wall of windows to our left that goes across the entire space on a really bright sunny day. This is just a huge challenge to deal with. We couldn't, we couldn't, th these didn't have shades and we couldn't possibly flag off that entire wall. So um, you'll see the sort of steps that we went through to, um, to try to tackle that. So we'll go through a round of flash frames where we're moving a flag, because I only had, I think that day, uh, an eight by eight or a 12 by 12 flag black, black cloth, which we use duvetine now. I've used felt in the past, which has some problems. Black plastic has some problems with reflectivity in shots like this, because the shots from, or the lights from your foreground or the conference room reflect into that black plastic and then back onto the surface. So you want something that just catches and absorbs that light. So in this first shot, if I turn off this, this group's mask, you'll be able to see where our light source is. We've reduced our shutter speed quite a bit, so, so we've already um, subdued a lot of those reflections. I mean, they're still there, but they're, at least they're not as bright as they were um, before. And then with this flash, we're really boosting the light in, in the conference room and also shaping some of the furniture and objects in the space. So you'll see here, we, our flag now is, is right here and it's blocking the, the, that bright window light that was on the right side of this frame. And then we just go through and start moving that flag around and you'll see it sort of shifting, blocking little things uh, as we move to the left until we get through with that. And, and you, there's still some major problem areas uh, to the top of this gray wall. Um, even we missed this little stretch here because I was just sort of overwhelmed trying to put this puzzle together. Um, but all in all, and we're, we were able to solve a lot of the issues through this exercise. And then we go through, you know, and have a, a layer for the window. Uh, Spencer Young, the assistant on the shoot, was kind enough to, to be a, a model and do some walking. And then we go through the retouch layer, and that's when I'm really able to um, clean up all of, all of the extra elements that were in there. Um, which of course took some work, but this was a really important shot for the, for the client and the project to show this very high-end conference room and how it sits within, within the space that we shot in a few other shots to sort of contextualize it. So here's the before and the after. So now I just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, describe how I think about the angle of reflection in terms of what we'll be seeing in the glass. So I drew a diagram to help better illustrate how I think of these reflections when I'm attempting to remove them from a scene uh, on set. So in this diagram, we're looking at the section of a space where a camera is looking towards a wall that has a window in it, and the blue lines indicate the line of sight from the camera to the top and bottom most portions of the window. And then when we turn on this green layer, this indicates all of the reflective area that we will end up seeing reflected in, in the glass. And then we can look at this version with a, a flag drawn behind the camera and see still that there's a lot of information in the foreground of the camera that's gonna be reflected back into the glass that we need to deal with somehow. So in this image, I just wanted to show how you can strategize a bit and use a flash in an adjoining space that's behind glass, such as this conference room back here, to get rid of the reflections and really help to eliminate the fixtures, finishes, and materials in the space cleanly. We did a flash frame just in the conference room to get a nice clean image behind that glass, and then we're able to cut a mask and quickly blend those two together. And already the shot is almost all, all there, with a few other uh, flash frames throughout the space to clean things up into shapes and furniture, and then the addition of models and some adjustments, we end up at the final image. In this last image, I just wanted to show an example of how the architecture can do a lot of the heavy lifting for us in certain circumstances. So here we're shooting this materials library that's very uh, balanced and, and brightly lit. And the space that we're shooting from is a lobby of a building that's actually quite a bit darker. So we don't have that much being reflected into the glass other than some light fixtures and um, the, the wall behind us. So with some strategic flashes, we can clean up a lot of that right off the bat. Uh, and then just a little bit of retouching and in addition of some models and final adjustments for color, and we get that final shot.
So I hope that helps to demystify and give some tips for troubleshooting um, situations like this when you're battling reflections in perpendicular surfaces to the camera um, that you can employ in your own practice. Um, in the past, in my past practice, I've shot a lot of artwork for galleries, artists, and museums, and I employ similar techniques, specifically with the flagging and using that idea of the angle of incidence to understand how large a, f a flag behind me needs to be um, in order to, to remove all the reflections from the glass in a framed piece of artwork to get a nice, clean uh, image of a piece of art. Um, so if this is also part of your practice, maybe this will also help you think about those types of situations and get um, better images more efficiently. So thanks for watching and keep the feedback coming for future ideas for videos and we'll see you next time.